So here's the problem. My Tesla can read SMS messages only, nothing from any other app. Now my Meta Ray-Bans have a little bit more options, but still nothing I really can use to communicate with Home Assistant. So what do I do when I need information from my home sent to me while I'm driving or out for a walk? So that's why I went ahead and built a custom script that finds where I'm at and sends me a notification on the device that's most relevant. Says, I closed the garage door for you. So stick around for today's video where I do a full tutorial on how to set up this notification bridge script and hopefully let you get notifications from Home Assistant on any device that you want. Hey there, I'm Ryan the Tech Guy and welcome back to The Smart House. So today I'm going to walk you through a simple Home Assistant script that I've called Notification Bridge. As I mentioned before, it solves a very real problem that I have had along with a lot of other users where your infotainment system in your car or one of your devices is very limited on what it can receive as far as notifications. So the script that I built will actually use the location of your phone and figure out which Bluetooth device it's connected to and then send the notification to that specific device. Now, of course, I've got it set up to send via SMS, but you could send it to another platform if that's more relevant to your setup. So hopefully along the way, you're gonna pick up some new skills. That includes templating in Home Assistant, writing and calling scripts, passing variables through scripts, creating notification groups, and even integrating sensors from the Home Assistant companion app so you can tell which Bluetooth device your phone's connected to. My day job in making YouTube videos, of course, requires a lot of focus concentration. Now lately, I've been reaching for Magic Mind instead of my second cup of coffee each day. It's a small drink, but it really helps me lock in and stay focused. One of the bonus effects that I found about drinking Magic Mind is that even if I've drank it in the morning, I still get that relaxation and calm focus through the end of the day, which is a big help for me. So if you'd like to check it out, I'd appreciate it if you use the link down below. Go to magicmind.com forward slash smart June and use code smart June. This will get you 48% off your first subscription. All right, let's head back to the office and see how to get this script set up. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the script, let's talk about what's actually required to get this all set up. So first of all, of course, you're gonna need Home Assistant. Any installation or any type will work just fine. Next up, you're gonna need an integration that you can send an email with, like Gmail, Office 365, or IMAP. I won't give you all the details on how to do this section because it depends on which type of email system you wanna use. The Gmail instructions that Home Assistant has are pretty useful. If you have a Gmail account, that's probably the easiest to set up. Next up, to send an SMS to your phone, you're gonna need to know your email gateway for your particular phone carrier. I've got a link down here below to a list of different ones. But for example, I'm in the US and mine is T-Mobile. So mine is just tmomail.net. So I just need to simply send an email to my phone, to my phone number at tmomail.net. It'll automatically convert that into a text message or SMS. And of course, to make this work, you need to have the Home Assistant companion app and you need to set up the Bluetooth sensor, which I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So with that out of the way, let's look at the script. So looking at it step-by-step, step, here's how the notification bridge works. So we actually call the script instead of using a standard notification action. And as part of that calling the script, we're gonna provide two inputs, a binary called emergency and a message, which is text. The only reason why I declared this emergency was so I could have, if there was a super high priority, like a water leak, it's gonna send it via notification group, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. If you haven't used notification group, they're super helpful in Home Assistant where you can set multiple endpoints and have it blast that notification out to a whole bunch of different devices. So this is great if you say have a family group you wanna send text to, or in my case, I've got an emergency group which basically sends it to every one of my devices. So if emergency is not true or not defined, then we move down to is a Bluetooth device connected to the target device, which in my case is my phone. So we'll see in a minute how to define what device is connected to your phone using the Home Assistant companion app. And if you're connected, then we wanna send the notification to that endpoint. So if it is connected to the target device, then it's going to send the message via email to my SMS email address, and that's automatically routed via SMS to your device. If not, it just sends it to a standard, whichever fallback method you have, which I just use the companion app in that case. So for example, in my home, I have notifications when my garage door automatically opens or closes. So if I'm in the car, I want those to go to the car so I can see them and know without having to look at my phone. If I'm not in the car, 
those notifications will go right to my phone. So this way you can kind of have the notifications follow you along wherever you are. This is also great because if I use my Ray-Ban Metas, I can have it send the notification over SMS and it'll read it out loud to me automatically in the glasses. So that's pretty cool. So next up, we're gonna see how to set up the Bluetooth settings in your Home Assistant app. So I'm assuming you're already gonna have your Home Assistant app set up and your phone tied to it, but I'll show you how to go in and enable that sensor that's required. So we'll open up our Home Assistant app, go to settings and scroll to the bottom where it says companion app. And then under here, we see man manage sensors. So we're gonna click the manage sensors and we'll scroll all the way down to the Bluetooth section. So on the Bluetooth sensors, we need to make sure this Bluetooth connection sensor is activated. So we click on it, it'll tell us it updates instantaneously. And if this tick box is turned on, it's gonna send a list of all the devices that are currently connected. It'll even output an entire list of all the paired devices if you want to see that as well. And now that we have that activated and we know the MAC address of our Bluetooth device, let's hop back over and set up some notification groups. So one of the kind of hidden features in Home Assistant is the ability to create a group of different notification services. And so you can send one message to the group instead of sending them to individual endpoints. Now the reason why it's not very well known is because you actually have to modify the YAML file to do this. You can't do this inside the UI, which is kind of annoying, but I'll really quickly show you how to get this set up. So I've got a link here to the notification groups documentation from Home Assistant. It's pretty easy to set up. All you really need to do is add in notify in your configuration.yaml, and then you can copy paste this example into your Home Assistant instance and modify it for your various endpoints. So I'll show you how it looks in mine. So I do all my editing in Studio Code Server because it's all integrated in the front end. Now on mine, I have a referenced notify.yaml file. So if I go to my configuration, you'll see notify include notify.yaml, but that's just because I like to keep my configuration separated. You could just paste in the notify example from the documentation and go from there. But I've got mine in a separate file, which is here. So if you scroll down to the bottom, we'll see platform group. We can give it a name, and this is what it shows up in the UI. And then under services, we wanna have a, an indented list of services here. And this is the notification service that you wanna to send to. So to find that, you can go to your developer tools, actions, and you can just type in the word notifications. And you'll see all these notified dots. These are all the different services that you can include. So if I wanted to send to say my watch, I could click here and copy this information, the last part, mobile underscore app, this whole part here, or my phone or whatever it happens to be, and then just add that in on this list. So I've got right now my S24 Ultra and my Mac Mini included in this notifications group. Then all you gotta do is go to developer tools, YAML, check your configuration, and then click reload groups, group entities, and notify services. Then we go back to actions, We'll see, I've got this test notification set up. So I could put any message, title, target, all that stuff, and it sends it to all those endpoints simultaneously instead of just one at a time. This is completely optional, but it is handy when you're grouping notifications together. If you'll make this easier on yourself, you can go to the blog post down below and I've got the YAML file from my script. You can just copy paste it in and then just replace the variables for your different endpoints. But I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step how this actually works in the UI interface. I'll go to settings, automations and scenes, scripts, and I've got my notification bridge here. So once we pasted our code in, we can switch back to the visual editor so I can explain each of these components. So at first we've created a building block of a choose, which is basically a nested if statement. So if the first, it basically checks to see if the first conditions are met, then moves to the next one, then the next one, and if none of them are met, it goes to this default actions, which is kind of a nice way of making this a simpler way of going through and setting up all your individual pieces. So option one is that emergency message. And so we've got a template condition here that says, if the state of the emergency variable that you've passed in is true, then we're gonna go and do this, then we're gonna do this action. And that action is simply sending to this Ryan notify standard group that I've created. And I'm using the message variable that I'm passing and a title variable that I'm passing as well. So what'll happen is it'll create this emergency message that'll be sent out to all my devices. If this first condition isn't true, move on to the next one, which is it checks to see if I'm in the Tesla. So what we've done is we've got this sensor 
Ryan's phone Bluetooth connection, which is that connection that's coming from Home Assistant. To explore this template further, let's jump in to see what the sensor actually looks like. So I'm gonna hop over to the developer tools, go to states, actually, we're gonna go into settings, integrations, mobile app, and we'll find Ryan, my phone. So this is all the information that's being passed to Home Assistant from the mobile app. So we'll go down here to where it says S24 Ultra Bluetooth, and we've got three connections. We'll click that, and then go to attributes, and we'll see the devices that are currently paired. So again, this is that same list that we saw before, so we can copy out of here as we want to. And we see right here is my Tesla Model Y. So I'm gonna copy that variable there. So I currently have three connections. So these are the three devices that are currently connected to my phone. But I'm not currently connected to the Tesla because it's out there right now. But I'm gonna grab this name variable here, copy that, and then we'll head back into our code here. So what this is gonna say is, this code saying in this attribute, in the attribute of this sensor, connected pair of devices, which if we go back over here, we can see. So the easiest way to evaluate this would be to go to developer tools. So now we know the devices are there and connected. We can actually click on this, click on the settings cog, and we'll grab this entity ID by clicking the copy button here. Go to developer tools, states, and we're gonna paste in that. The reason we're gonna do that is because we wanna see how it's actually formatted in the code. So if you look here, we can see the different attributes, and the one we're looking for is connected paired devices. So if we go back to our code here, so we see in state attribute, the first is our sensor that we're looking into, the next is the attribute connected paired devices. So then here at the front, we wanna put the name of our device in. So right now I'm just using Sparky because it's kind of a unique identifier, but I could go back into here and grab this Tesla Model Y Sparky, copy that, that's the name, and paste that here in single quotes. So if this is in here, then it should show a true. So we can test this by going to, we can copy it, going into our template screen and paste that in here. So it's false right now because my phone isn't currently connected to the Tesla. It's not gonna work because I'm not connected to it. But here in a second, I'll show you what it looks like when it does work, because I'll test it with my meta glasses. But we know that's the right value. So we've got that set there. And so if that template is true, it's going to send a notification to my endpoint that I've set up before. So I already have this notification via my Gmail account, and I'm sending it to my, my phone number at tmomail.net. So all you gotta do is just replace that with your particular carrier. So if you say you're on Verizon, you can go out here to this article here, go to V, Verizon, and it's just the phone number at myvzw.com or vtext.com. What you'll see here, the message is the message and the title, that the variables that we're passing in. So again, it's dynamic, we can set it to whatever we want, but it'll always end up to the same endpoint. And then I've got a fallback here that's going to fall back to my phone. So it's gonna send it via the mobile app. So if it doesn't match either of those two criteria, it'll fall into that one. So that's good and grand, but what if, let's add something new. What if I wanna detect if I'm wearing my meta glasses and send the notification that way? So that's quite simple. We're just going to copy this send SMS to Tesla, duplicate, and we can click on here and rename it. Call it send SMS to meta glasses. And then under this template, instead of saying Tesla Model Y Sparky, we'll go in and see, scroll down here to my RB Meta. So these are my Meta glasses. We're gonna copy that. And we're gonna paste that in place of the Tesla Model Y Sparky. And do the same thing. So instead it's, gonna, it's still gonna send me the, the notification via SMS, which I've already defined before. So to test this, I'm gonna go ahead and open these up, and put them on. So once the glasses are on and connected, we wanna go over to, back to here, and now we see my connections have gone to four, so something new is connected. We'll click attributes, and right there we see connected pair devices, my Ray-Ban metas are connected. So now if I go back over to my developer tools, I can paste this in here, and it's now showing true. Also I can go into here, 
and click the three dots next to this and say test, and the condition passes. So now if I were to send a notification, if it's not an emergency, I'm not currently connected to the Tesla, it's gonna send them to my SMS, which then the glasses will read out. So I'll click save that here. So now that we've seen how to set up the script, let's see how to actually use it. So to use it, we just simply have to create an automation. So go here to automations. So we'll create a blank automation. You can have it do whatever you want, say when your device gets home. So say when my son gets home, then I'm gonna click add action. And instead of typing notify here, I'm gonna type in script. Then we'll scroll down and we'll see a list of all of our scripts. So we wanna do type in notification. So here's my new notification bridge test that I created. And then we're gonna to need to click the three dots and switch over to YAML mode because we're going to be injecting data using this data set here. So we'll click edit in YAML. And then under data, we should need to erase those brackets, hit enter, and then we need to type, hit a tab, type in title. And this is whatever your title is gonna be, message and emergency. So I don't have it set to emergency, so you can hit zero or you can ignore the variable altogether. So we put those all in there and then we can actually switch back to visual editor and it has the action data in there. So to test this, we can just click the three dots and click run action. And then... Message on your phone. Say, this is our message. So there you go. You can see that this can be applied in many different ways. Yes, right now it's just sending me an SMS message if I'm in my car or the glasses are connected but you could even extend this to say location. So if you wanted to send yourself a notification while you're at work to your work computer or another device, then you just simply go in and instead of looking for the Bluetooth connections, you could say where your phone is at. If your phone's at work, your phone's at home, whatever, then you can route your notifications wherever you want. So you can see this application can be really made as complicated as you really want it to be. Another nice thing too is you can, if you change phones often, and your name changes and you can go and rename it. You can use this bridge to send all your notifications through and then just update it in one location. And again, if you want to try this, I've got the full code in a blog post listed down here below. And if you love increasing your daily productivity, feel free to check out Magic Mind. That little green bottle helps me focus all throughout the day and I'm happy to be partnering with them. And thanks again to Magic Mind for sponsoring today's video. If I did happen to miss something, I'll try to create a short to fill in any gaps that I find. If you do want to check out my other Home Assistant tutorials, I've got a whole playlist right over here. Thank you again for making this far, and I'll see you on the next video.